and welcome to Nikki and Stitches. Today I'm going to show you my favorite technique for guaranteeing that your designs are perfectly centered on your sides. You can use the same method for really any rectangular or square surface that you are painting on or applying a decal to. So it could be like a mirror, a frame, a rectangular space on a wall, whatever you're working with. I'm going to create a shape in my software and actually cut that as part of my stencil. And you can use the same shape for pretty much any of those surfaces that I mentioned that you like to work with. So we're going to get started right away and then I'll give you a couple tips for painting your stencil afterwards. To get started, I'm going to draw a rectangle to represent the size of my box. So I click on the draw a rectangle tab on the left and click the rectangle so that my shape has four right angles. Click and drag, I can make it any size that I want. We'll go back and fix it later. And hit escape on your keyboard to stop drawing rectangles. Now I'm gonna click on my rectangle so that it is selected. And in the transform box, I will adjust the size. So just um, to help you find that panel, if it's not already open for you, you can click the panels drop down menu at the top of your silhouette software and go down to transform. It will show up over here on the right side of your screen like mine is. And you wanna click on the tab that has the arrow here and this will help you change the dimensions of your box. So for me, I want the width to be 15 inches and the height to be four and a half and hit enter on your keyboard. You can see the size of your rectangle changes. And like I said, this represents the shape of the piece of wood I'm going to cut for my sign. To make it easier for me to see how the pieces fit together, I like for my background shape, the size of my sign, to be the color that I'm going to actually paint it. So I'm gonna go back up to that panels drop down menu and select fill color. So another box will pop up over here on the right side of my screen and I'm gonna paint this sign white. So I'll click on the white box. This will be aged when I paint it, but in my software, I think just having the colors kind of helps me figure out a little bit better how big my design should be. So speaking of my design, here it is right here. And I'm gonna drag it over. Oh, and it's behind my rectangle, so that's a quick fix. Click your design. And in the object drop down menu, you're going to click arrange and we want to bring my design to the front. So now when I slide it up, it will be on top of my sign. And I'm going to use my software to center it. So I'll click and drag so both pieces are selected and then go up to object, align and center. So that will get them centered left and right. And then if I wanted to center it, center it top and bottom, I could go object, align and middle. And you see it bumps up a little bit. So my design is ready to go. This is exactly how it's going to fit on the piece of wood. So the trick I'm gonna show you is good for any um, sign that you're doing or any piece that you're doing where you're fitting something onto a background that has a straight edge across the top and you're trying to center it. So I always start just by clicking on this draw a rectangle box and I'm gonna click and drag to draw two rectangles. It doesn't matter how big they are, we're gonna fix that in a minute. Hit escape on your keyboard so you're not continuing to draw rectangles and now we're going to adjust their sizes. So typically I pick one of them and I go over to the transform uh, panel and I make the height one inch and I make the width usually 12 just because that, for the most part, is the smallest that I usually have ever needed it. You kind of want it to be long enough to give you um, some length to use as a guide for placement, but you also don't want it so long that you're wasting vinyl. So 12 inches for me seems to be like a good place to start. So I will fix that because my width is 12, but my height has changed. I want my height to be one. There we go, and hit enter. So, the other box right here, we're gonna make a perfect square. So whatever the height of this one was will be the height and width of the square. So we made this long rectangle one inch high. So I'm going to make the second piece a one inch square just by putting ones in both the width and height and hitting enter. So now we're gonna click and drag to select both of them and I want them centered right on top of each other. So object align center 
object align middle and I'm going to group them together so they are now one piece. And then I take this rectangular shape that I've drawn and I slide it down at the top of my design. So in this case, this whole sign is only four and a half inches high. So this is gonna be a little too wide. You can see it's overlapping my design. So I'm just gonna click on this bottom white box and drag it up so that it's a little skinnier in this case. And I want the top of this shape that I have just drawn to line up exactly with the top of this uh, white box that I drew to represent my piece of wood. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can really make sure that they are lined up. And I'm going to click on the shape that I drew and maybe just push it up a tiny little bit so now it's perfectly lined up. And one last step to prepare, when we have the top of that long skinny rectangle lined up with the top of our white rectangle that represents our piece of wood, you just wanna make sure that everything is centered. So we already have the design centered on the piece of wood. We just wanna get that skinny rectangle centered too. So once again, I'll just select everything and make sure that it's all in the middle by going to Object, Align, and Center. So I'm going to cut this rectangular box that I drew with my design. I want to keep it exactly in place just like this. I don't need to cut the white box that represents my piece of wood. So I can get rid of that. I'm going to click on that and delete it. And I want to cut all of this in one piece exactly how it is without anything moving. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to group it together so nothing moves accidentally along the way. And I'm going to zoom back out and go over here to my page settings. This represents the piece of vinyl that I'm going to cut it on. And this is 12 and a half inches wide. So I'm going to have to increase my page size. I have it set up as a 12 by 12 right now. So let's bump this out to be 18. So it's a little bit longer. And we can scoot this over and give it a quick twist. If you go to your transform panel and click on this uh, arrow, you can give it a twist 90 degrees and move it over into position and we're going to cut this. So here we have our stencil cut and we're going to take a second to quickly weed away the design and we will paint in the area that we pull away. I'm going to make sure to get the entire design. There's a dot to my eye right there. And now remember, we have that rectangular shape cut into the vinyl just above it. I'm going to pull away the little piece that we added into the middle. And now I'm going to use my scissors to trim around the top of the design. And as I do it, you might be able to see a little bit better. I'll start up at the corner. And I'm just going to use my scissors to trim in to the side of that rectangle. That's where the corner is and it starts to getting cut. I pull all the way across and I'll trim this off the other end over here. So you can see now I have the rectangle cut across the top. This part is a little sloppy, but that's okay. I have the center weeded away and then I have my design weeded as well. I'm going to take a piece of clear transfer paper and lay it right across, nice and smooth, and give that a good scrape. And now one last step before I take it over to my board. I'm going to grab a pencil and a ruler, and I'm just going to use my ruler to draw the line in this very center of that square or now it's a rectangle now that we shortened it. I'm going to draw a line right on my transfer paper that represents the center of that little rectangle that we weeded away in the center. From there, I will bring over my piece of wood. Remember we have this cut to be 15 inches across and four and a half inches high, just like we recreated it in our software. And we're going to grab a piece of washi tape and guess right about where the center is and put the tape on just like that. And then I'll use a ruler to verify that. So it's 15 inches across. So I'm gonna double check. Here is seven and a half inches in from the right side and I'll mark it 
So right there at the edge of my washi tape. And I'll double check going this way. Seven and a half inches in from the left side is right there. So the exact center of this board is right here on that line. And now look how easy it is to get my stencil perfectly straight. I'm going to, here's my stencil, flip it over so the white backing is up. I'm gonna carefully peel away that white backing. And then I'm gonna put it right back on, but just leave a tiny bit of the top of the stencil peeking over. So I can kind of adjust it a little bit when I put it on my board and make sure it's in exactly the right spot before the whole thing sticks to the wood. And look how easy this is. I will line up the pencil mark that I made on my transfer paper with the pencil mark I made on my washi tape. So that guarantees that my design is centered on the board. And then I'll use the top of these long rectangles that I cut into my stencil, and I will line them up with the top of my board. So I know the stencil is on straight because these rectangles are perfectly lined up with the top edge of my board. And I know my stencil is in the center because I marked the center of the stencil and the center of the board and put them on top of each other. From there, you can just lift up your stencil and peel away the backing paper carefully so that the stencil does not move on your board and give it a good scrape into place and paint. So, as I said, now you're ready to paint. And the most important thing to remember when you paint your stencils is to paint them twice. The first time you paint your stencil, you want to paint it actually your background color. So it should be the same color that you can see through the stencil. And you do that because even though you're using adhesive vinyl, you still can get a little bit of bleed through. When you paint it the same color as your background first, that really gets rid of almost any bleed through that you might have. And then once that is dry, you can paint with the color that you actually want your stencil to be. Thanks.